Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. And thanks for joining us today for another segment of eWeek eSpeaks. And my guest this morning is Zias Caravalla. Zias is one of our regular writers at eWeek, has his own uh, consulting firm, ZK Research. And uh, he's known as one of the best networking and chip analysts around. And Zias, welcome again to eWeek eSpeaks. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, I always like doing these with you. So. Well, it's, it's kind of fun. It's easier than writing everything. I can just talk. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So we had a big news item that happened yesterday, and yesterday was uh, September 13th. I'm going to mention that because it'll be an important day, I think, in the history of, um, of IT, especially the chip industry. So, uh, Zias, mm -hmm. you helped break the news yesterday. Tell us about uh, the fact that NVIDIA has now bought ARM and what that means. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting acquisition, right? So yesterday, as you mentioned, uh, NVIDIA announced that it was buying uh, ARM uh, from SoftBank for about $40 billion, which is about $8 billion more than what SoftBank paid for it back in 2016. One of the, well, actually, one of the fascinating things about this, Chris, is that in 2016, when SoftBank, right, just four years ago, when SoftBank took ARM private, uh, they paid $32 billion for it, and at the time, NVIDIA's market cap was only 30 billion. And you know, today, four years later, NVIDIA's market cap's a little over 300 billion. So they've grown 10X in that period of time. And I think what that does, it really underscores how important the GPU is uh, to, to our life today. And for, you know, for those watching this that don't really understand the difference between CPUs and GPUs, CPUs are really good at single threaded processes, open, you know, booting a computer, or run a word, things like that. When GPUs do well are things that require parallel processes, processing. So they were great for video, for graphics cards, which is why they're big with gamers. Right. But it just so happened the same kind of processing capabilities needed for artificial intelligence and other types of accelerated computing like ray tracing and self-driving cars. And so today it's you find NVIDIA GPUs in an Alexa's and, and Cisco spark boards or WebEx boards. You yeah. find them you, you find them in self-driving cars or, you know, that you find them everywhere today. They, yeah, you know, in, other word, in other words, the more complicated the application, the more it needs a GPU, it sounds like. Yes, that, that, that is true. The, well, yeah, the more for those complex workloads that require accelerated computing, you know, it's used to, it's been used now for uh, doing an R&D on COVID testing. It's been used to map the human genome and things like that. So <clears throat> it's become a very, very important part of our lives. Now, you can't run a computer on GPUs alone, you still need a CPU in there to perform a lot of the other tasks. And so you wind up finding a lot of CPUs and GPUs. And that was, I think, much of the thinking uh, behind this acquisition, acquisition for NVIDIA. The one thing NVIDIA is really good at is they create these larger reference architectures for systems, right? So if you think of ARM as they, they make a chip, but NVIDIA will actually think about how to take that chip and put it into a system. And that's one of the reasons why NVIDIA has been so successful as a GPU manufacturer versus AMD or some of the other competitors out there is they don't think at a chip level, even though they make chips, they think at a system level. And so their systems tend to work better. You know, recently they bought Mellanox. And so now they're bringing Mellanox networking chips into data centers along with their GPUs to create a better data center environment versus just a single server. Mm -hmm. I think with ARM, what that gives them the capability to do is now take ARM CPUs and put them in a lot of places uh, that they've never been before. So if you don't understand, for people that are, don't understand the difference between ARM and say like an Intel CPU, is Intel makes CPUs that are these plug and play devices that you plug into a socket or a motherboard, and then the manufacturer of the server or the operating system will actually optimize the software to run on that processor. With ARM, ARM doesn't actually make the chips. They just create the blueprint and say, here, you make your own chips. And so a mobile phone manufacturer, for instance, like an iPhone, they'll actually make their own chips. They'll put it in the phone, but then they can optimize the hardware around it and the software. Mm -hmm. So with Intel and AMD, you can optimize it through software, but with ARM, you can optimize through hardware and software, yeah. which creates lower power utilization, better processing capabilities. And I think what NVIDIA wants to do now with this is it gives them the opportunity to take a really more of an end-to-end -end approach for uh, IoT devices, self-driving cars, uh, even servers, computers. Apple's already announced that they're moving to ARM, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So if you believe the future's AI, 
and you believe that that's powered by GPUs and CPUs, then NVIDIA's ability to create these end-to-end -end systems has just you know, gone way up. And I think that's that, that, uh, going to allow us, especially in the edge computing market, I, I think uh, they're going to be all over that with this, with this acquisition. Yeah. So. so GPUs allow a, a lot more options for a manufacturer. There's no question about it. And well, I think I, I think one of the, good. Yeah, and I think one of the interesting aspects is it does create options. On the on the the analyst the press call yesterday, uh, Jensen Huang, their CEO, was asked, "Will will you now take ownership of the manufacturing of the chips uh, versus just the blueprint, or could you take the NVIDIA GPU model and move it through the same kind of factory where you just produce the blueprints?" And he said, "Anything's possible, right?" So it gives them options, and they they can deliver all of their stuff is turnkey or they could deliver it all as blueprints. And, but I think it gives them options to do both. And I think they'll wind up doing both and it's going to be based on the type of customers they want. So if you're in a really, really demanding environment like supercomputing, they're probably going to build everything turnkey. If you're dealing with edge devices that are, you know, pretty different as far as form factors go, that's where you go more of the blueprint model. So I do think it gives NVIDIA a lot of options to grow from here, but clearly they, they are, you know, this, um, uh, their ability to now impact, the, especially the AI industry through chip design has never been better. What does this do to the market though, especially against Intel, which is uh, still the number one silicon processing company in the world? Um, to, 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 well, I think the Intel, it's, uh, um, uh, you, we call them the number one processing company, by market cap they're not. <laughs> uh, they probably, sh in fact, I think ARM actually might ship more chips today than, than Intel does. Really? Uh, yeah, well, they sh they've, they shipped about 200 billion last year, I believe. Now, they're much smaller, right, in size. So they're using yeah. a lot of different things. But I think, the, you know, Intel, Intel is really Intel. They haven't really changed a lot in the last 30, 40 years. They, they have never made a good GPU. Uh, they don't have, they have never made a good embedded processor. Uh, why is that? Why, why do you think that is? Why couldn't they, with all their power and might and market influence, make a GPU to be competitive? I don't, I don't know. I've wondered that myself and I've tried to figure that out. It, it seems like the high end of the Intel GPU line always winds up being the low end of the NVIDIA GPU line. And I think Intel for a long time tried to make a, a, a combined CPU GPU, which those two things never, it's hard to make a combined one. And so they never really broke out of that mentality. And I, but I, I do think the magic to what NVIDIA has done is again, is sort of the systems approach where it's not just the GPU they sell, they've got that whole developer ecosystem built on top of it and all the developer tools and things like that, where Intel really relies on the, the, the community to sort of do that themselves, where NVIDIA has made that easier. So I think when you get into GPU processing, um, the, the approach that NVIDIA took was right for that market where Intel tried to take more of a CPU approach and apply it to GPUs. And yeah. so- yeah. Is, there a, is there a parallel to say Sun Microsystems and you know because I, I was thinking about this just now, Sun was number one in the word you know in the desktop process, uh, desktop computer and uh, in the in the in the server business, and it just got stuck. It just had a mentality where it was stuck. The cash cow was, you know the um, uh, the process you know the processors and the computers they made, but they didn't change and. Uh, uh, fast enough, and then Linux came along and upended them, and they're out of business now, and they were subsumed by Oracle 10 years ago. I'm just wondering if that's what Intel is going through, kind of the same thing. Well, it is, and, and look, Chris, Intel's not the first company to go through this, no. right? This whole concept of innovator's dilemma. You know, right, IBM right. was the compute leader in the mainframe area, but then Wintel wound up being that in the right. PC era and uh, uh, and really into the mobile era. And NVIDIA has now become that in the AI era, right? So we always see this shift in, you know, in power. And, you know, Dell was the leader in computing when computing was on-prem, but then when it went to the cloud, that became Amazon. There's nothing that stopped any of these companies with all those resources from becoming the next thing, right. except for... Oh, an unwillingness to disrupt themselves. And I, I Le think leadership, vision, yeah. Yeah, well, it's the unwillingness to disrupt themselves. If you see something coming, um, and that and that's why I sort of that's like the, the, the NVIDIA approach. Jensen has instilled a culture of that company that's very, very customer-centric. They always do what's best for the cu customer. They throw out a lot of Skunk Works projects that, that don't manifest into anything, but they take a lot of customer feedback seriously as to how to build their products. And I think that 
this acquisition, I think, was largely driven by that. I think people have been asking them to, to you know, to have their own CPU for a while, or at least their own ARM-based processor. They could have licensed it themselves, right, and built their own, but they just chose to buy the company because I think that's a that you know that that fits their model a little bit better. All right. Well, yes, that's a great uh, overview. I appreciate that and your analysis on this. Uh, and uh, the story's in eweek.com if you want to see a lot more detail about it. Uh, and we'll be following this, obviously, very closely as time goes on. It's a, it's a real stake in the ground, a real, um, real milestone in the business, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to shake the industry up. I think, that, I think from here forward, I think, uh, you know, it, it, what this does is it allows NVIDIA to now take their GPUs to to the ARM-based audience, and that could expand the addressable market of where we see AI, AI huge. I, I'm a firm believer that AI is the biggest sort of technology that's come along since the birth of computing, and we're going to see AI built into everything, right? Uh, yeah, anything that's going to process, we're going to see it uh, do some sort of AI. Yeah, AI is getting everywhere, but it's got yeah. a long way to go, and there's still a lot more use cases out there for it. So, Zias Caravalla, thank you very, very much for coming on eSpeaks. And I appreciate your insight into all this. Thank you. And for everybody following along today, thank you very much. And have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.